Hi everyone, my name is Jim Giles. I'm the Senior Analyst for Food and Carbon Systems here at GreenBiz. And I am super excited to have with me Krista Harden, who's the Executive Vice President for Global Environmental Strategy at Dairy Management Incorporated. Hi Krista. Hello, how are you? I'm doing good, thanks. And we are here to talk about a really interesting, exciting initiative that the DMI has launched, uh, the Net Zero Initiative. Why don't you introduce that for the folks who are watching? Well, thank you, Jim, and I appreciate you and your listeners, um, uh, your interest, frankly, in what's happening in the U.S. dairy industry, because it's a very exciting time for us. And we're probably um, talking about things that a lot of people don't think about when they think about dairy. But our Net Zero Initiative is part of our overreaching um, environmental goals set by our industry earlier this year um, that really, um, I think, are kind of planting the, the seeds for what's going to be a great future for U.S. dairy, looking at issues including getting to um, carbon neutrality by 2050. But we also have water quality goals and nutrient management goals. But we're going to talk about NZI, as we say today, which really is about getting our industry collectively um, to carbon neutral or better by 2050. I mean, this is so exciting and ambitious and really, really, I'm just so glad to hear it. So to give us a sense for how you're going to hit these goals, maybe you could just pull out one or two initiatives that the industry will be rolling out over the next five years or so that will get you towards this bigger goal. Thanks, Jim. It is exciting. And I, I would be very honest in saying we don't have all the answers yet. That's why we have a long runway. This is a journey. As dairy farmers and our industry come together to really look at solutions, we know that we have some answers already, but there are answers we don't have. So there's going to be some research, there's going to be some testing, there's going to be pilot farms, there's going to be initiatives that brings farmers together with all sorts of other partners um, to really help, you know, get some answers, do some measuring, figure out some of these um, answers for questions. We know enteric, for instance, is an issue. So looking at feed rations. There's not a lot of data available today on one of the most common rotations that we use in dairy feed, which is alfalfa and corn silage. So we know we've got to do some work there. There's also some work in feed additives that may actually make a, diff a difference on enteric. And then there are questions about what happens after the methane digester with those products. Are there things or fertilizers, some separations that we can do? And really, it, it also is underlying of everything, Jim, is scale. How do we get this to more dairy farmers as we find technologies and practices that make sense and will help us get to carbon neutrality? How do we make sure that more dairy farmers can participate? So there's a couple of things that we know we need to focus on and work on. That's why the industry has come together, working very hard to help try to find those solutions and answers. That's really interesting. And I, I think it also gives us a sense of the complexity of the challenge here. It's easy to think about dairy as just like a farmer, like one operation, it all looks the same. But of course, any dairy operation is actually at the heart of an ecosystem of partners, of suppliers and customers. And I imagine that you can't hit a goal as ambitious as this without collaboration within that ecosystem. So tell us a little bit about what you hope to happen there. Yeah, you're exactly right, Jim. You know, we like to say that we're um, extremely diverse. And in my mind, that is our strength. You know, no two dairy farmers are alike, neighbor to neighbor, um, you know, sibling to sibling. And across the country, dairies are in every state. So we know we've got to tailor these answers to soil types, to other environmental pressures, regulatory schemes, depending on where the dairy farmers are. And they can't do this alone. You're exactly right. It takes the research community from universities, from private sector, it takes others up the food chain, frankly, to work with us and help find those answers. We have great partnerships right now that we're really expanding and building on um, because this is expensive too. There's um, you know, profitability issues for dairy farmers and just staying on that dairy farm to get these answers. So we're looking for support from others. We have great partners like Nestle, who's come to the table for us um, with over up to $10 million over the next five years, but it will take a, a broad partnership, a deep partnership. Um, but dairy farmers are at the core of this. They're committed to this and they're ready to, to work with, um, with our partners. That's great. Thank you so much. And thanks for coming here, Krista, today and giving us a sense for what you're shooting to achieve. I know that we here at Green Biz are going to be keeping a close eye on that and reporting back on this project. And I'm wishing you the best of success with it all. 
I'm Jim Giles. I'm the analyst for food and carbon here at Greenbiz. I've had with me Krista Harden from Dairy Management Incorporated. Thanks. Thank you, Jim.